Hi, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain. Now today's card is unusual in that it's going to be a full piece of A4 folded in half to create an A5 card. Now most of the cards that we make are generally A6 card in the UK or in Europe or A2 size if you're in the States. But sometimes you want to make a card for someone maybe who's elderly or whose sight isn't quite as great and maybe it would be better to make them a slightly larger card to have a bit more impact and clearer visibility. So this is one that I've designed with that in mind. Now I've made my sentiment which is a stamped image and all I've done is heat embossed it with a platinum embossing powder. And then I used some ink from a stamping pad to go around the outside of it to give a little more shadow. Now it's had a chance to dry, so I want to actually increase that shadow a little more. So I'm going to get my ink pad out again, and I use just a tiniest little dab of glycerin. So, a tiny bit of glycerin on my work surface there. Now I've got a glass board on my desk, so I can work directly on my desk. It just makes life easy. Pick it up with a dauber. This is a Tim Holtz one, I believe. And then just dab down some ink on my work surface as well. Pick that up and do as you would normally. Just go around the outer edges to add a little more depth of colour. Just going to put a little more ink. Over, done it drying out. It's a good way of putting some extra colour into your sentiment and also giving it a little emphasis and tying it into the colour scheme of your card. So that's done out of the way, and I can just wipe off my work surface. Okay. Piece of kitchen towel to dry off to. So my sentiment is ready to be used and normally I would just allow that to dry naturally. Sometimes I just put the heat gun over it but not too often. So I've got my card base and I've also got this little piece. This is actually part of a, a fancy table mat commonly available in Spain and for whatever reason I cut this little piece. I think I was embossing with it but I thought to myself it would actually look quite nice down there in the centre of the card and put my happy birthday sentiment over it. So that was my thought. But I know for sure that if I don't actually use a ruler, I will end up putting it somewhere other than in the middle. So I'm just going to mark out the middle. So we have 148, which means I want to have that in the middle of that. So that would be 50, 74. So the middle is and going to be there. So as long as I have that pretty much lined up then I'll be happy. I want to move it up a little bit. So if I just put a mark a little bit further up and then that can go over it. Yeah that's where I want it to be. So I'm now going to use some varnish to stick it because the varnish is acrylic this is a plastic, so hopefully it will do the job. Stick that like that. And I'm actually going to put a piece of tissue over the top to press it down. There. So that piece is on. Now this one I actually want to be raised. So I'm going to get my double-sided foam tape onto that. Just grab a pair of scissors. I 
so you can use any sentiment stamp that you like but if you are making it for someone who's a little short-sighted then you might want to make it a big stamp rather than a little one. It's quite unusual for me to get my sentiments on first, but you know, I have to make sure I've got space for it. So <laughs> I thought it was a good idea this particular time. To make the butterflies that I've got here, in this particular case, I wanted to hand paint my butterfly. So what I've got is my stamp, which is, as I said, one of my homemade ones and I have cut out the image from the file because I make these with a SVG file so I've got the basic outline that I can use and in this particular case I have made it so that it doesn't have an offset so this is going to be the same size as the printed image but then when you do this you think to yourself well if I'm using a stamp positioner, how do I get that to stay put? And actually, there is a very simple workaround to this. What I do, I'm using the Tim Holtz one, but it could be whatever stamp positioner you're using. I put in a piece of scrap paper, not even card, just paper. And don't take any notice of the fact I've got a piece of foam here. This is just the way I set mine up. Everyone's got their own favourite way of setting up their positioners. But I put in a piece of paper and I literally slot it in so that it is directly into the guidelines on the left and on the bottom. What you can do is just position this wherever it may fall. You make sure that your paper is bottom left corner and then you can pick up your stamp and you can actually stamp the image onto the paper. Now this doesn't have to be a really great stamp, it just needs to be marked. That's all it's to do. There we go. So you have it on the paper, you put it back into its corner. So I'll just put a little bit of glue on there. And you place your piece of card, whatever it is that you've cut your butterfly out of, directly over that. Now obviously you must make sure you've got it sticky side down. I need a bit more glue on that because I took it up. And I tend to take the smallest bits, position those as I think they should be and then manoeuvre around until I get it pretty much where I want. I'm going to take a slightly darker colour so that you can see this more easily when I actually do the stamping. So, without moving my stamp, which is on the lid, just take some colour. This particular one is Memento Teal Zeal. And then I can stamp my butterfly. Voila, so I've got my basic stamped image. So I'm just going to wipe off my stamp. There we go. And I use one of these um, sort of kitchen cloth type things. It doesn't have any fibres on it, so you're not going to get bits of fluff on your stamp. It's a right pain when you get bits of fluff on your stamp. Uh, what I'm going to do is just move my stamp positioner out of the way completely because at the moment I don't need that. Now you can choose whatever you like to colour in your image and as it happens I have got cheap water-based felt tip pens here and a water brush. A water brush is just a brush with a nib that you fill with water in the reservoir and these are great for doing small items so basically I'm just going to tip these out on my desk so that I can see what I've got here 
and going to pick some colours. Probably too many to choose from, but there we go. And I'm going to go for pink first of all. Now, if you're using a scrap paper, obviously you can test it out on your scrap paper, so it still has its uses. And so just do a little bit of colour, and maybe I can zoom in a little bit. I have to move these to one side. There we go, that's better. You can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to colour part of these sections here, going down to the biggest of those first ovals, like so. And then take my water brush and just lightly go over it to fade the colour. Now I've cut my butterfly from actual watercolour paper because although I've got plenty of cardstock, most of the cardstock I've got does not like having water put over it, it pills and it's horrid. So I have deliberately used watercolour paper. If you're going to do this, test your paper beforehand so that you don't find you've completely ruined your image and you know, made a mess of your hard work to start with. Uh, I'm going to go for some purple. Now these are double-ended. These are Carioca brand ones. I think they're all Cariocas. They may be. I think they might be. And so I've got fat tips and I've got thin tips. And even the fat tips, if you use the point, you can get a very fine line. So these I'm going to do sort of like a teardrop shape in there. And then I'm going to pull the colour in like so. You can find all sorts of proprietary, supposedly, you know, watercolour felt tips. You buy cheap children's felt tips, they do the same thing. So, I've now got a very pale pink. Well, sort of a peachy pink here, I think. I'm going to use the other tip. Oh, that one's dried out. do the fade in the opposite direction for these and basically you can just play and have the effect that you like. You can of course have two colours at opposite ends and make them meet in the middle if that's what you want to do. So what colour am I going to go for? Blue. I do tend to try and colour it in, in the same sort of pattern, so you know, if I'm doing a horseshoe shape in one, I do it on the other side in the same sort of shape. That just aids the symmetry. And I'm going to go for this one, see what colour this is on this side. Oh yeah, that's a different colour. So that's fine, I can do... Do that one as well. So if I do that, there we are. Blend that one out. This one ends up just being the very pale green. And then this one here just go between the two. And you'll end up with a blend of colour. I think I need something on the outside that's going to be quite strong. That's a strong blue. So I'm going to put this 
some stronger blues in here. These last three dots on the top there. The water brushes tend to have some very nice tips to them and they're nice to use for small areas because the tip is so very, very fine. When you want to clean it, if you need to clean it, just squeeze it slightly and rub it on a tissue and that will do the job nicely. Now I think I need to go back into the purpley sort of spectrum. Let's see what this one is. That's definitely purple. And at this time I'm going to go strong on this end. Decisions, decisions. What this colour is. Oh, that's a bit dry. What's that one? So I could go goldy, couldn't I? A little bit of gold on there, why not? It's looking quite pretty and I think I need some more pink and these more purple. Oh, it's definitely more purple looking. That's a very dark one. Okay, so finished with that bit, just going to clean off my brush there, there we go, and so I've done that and I thought to myself when I finished it, I thought actually what I want to do is add a little bit of sparkle, so this is why I haven't moved anything here. I can come back in, I can replace my piece of paper. I can use some frost mark on my butterfly stamp, like so. Check that this is still in the corner, which it is, and then stamp over it again. And this is why I wanted to make sure. Whoops. <laughs> nothing actually moved so I can now take this one and put my powder on I'm going to go for a sparkle powder I have no idea what brand this is I've had it for a long time I actually don't use it very often but it does add a nice bit of sparkle when you need it to and of course because it's embossing powder it doesn't come off when everyone's trying to open the card. I'm just going to get a pair of tweezers to pick this up. I don't want to get this all over my fingers. I'll never get it off again. There we are. Just going to gently put that down. to remove this out of the way because I know what happened if I try and tip my powder off it's going to go all over there tip that back in there and take the excess off over the bin because I know there's going to be some Just in case there's more than I think there is over there, the roller. 
So I'm going to hold this again with the tweezers in order to heat and emboss it. And you need to make sure your embossing gum is pretty warm to start with. Yeah, I think that's where I want those to be. Now I have ever so slightly bent my butterflies just so there's a bit of movement in there. I've got a piece of paper stuck in the back of that so just rip that off. Obviously if you're posting them they'll go flat but then when someone actually gets the card they can allow the wings to sit up a little bit. Now the other thing that I did was I cut out some very tiny versions of these butterflies just from some card that I coloured again with the inks. And I did it again using the blender, just put some over the card and then I cut them out. And these I'm actually just going to put flat so they can just have a little dab of varnish on them and be popped down. Or actually it might be easiest to do it that way, put the varnish on there and then to take a butterfly and pop it on the varnish. Okay, so I have some and little crystals here. Oops. Decided it wanted to stick to me rather than the card. And there we have the finished card. I think that's very pretty and it's not actually that time consuming to do. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Take care now. Bye bye.